Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. We got some good juicy stories to talk about. Nvidia doing an oopsie, AMD doing mega oopsies. We got everything oopsing all over the place. But before we get into the oopsie doopsies, let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is gonna be our website, UFD Deals. You see, UFD Deals, my friends, conglomerates all the best tech deals that we can find around the internet, puts them in one location, so you don't have to go searching around for if you could save money on this or that. We just put it right there for you. So if you wanna save money on a monitor, a graphics card, whatever, what have you, check out UFD Deals. It, we get an affiliate kickback, you guys save money, we all go away happy with things that we want in our pockets. Although I don't know how you'd put a monitor in your pocket, but uh, you know, to each his own. Anyways, if you want to check it out, UFD Deals, links in the video description. Let's go ahead and talk about the first oopsie, which is something that we reported on in hot news a little while ago, which was that SoftBank, who owns some shares of NVIDIA, was looking to uh, purge their investment in the company. And it appears that has actually happened. They announced that they have dumped all $3.6 billion of their investment in NVIDIA stock. It looks like the the dumping of the cash was done throughout January, so it doesn't look like we're gonna see a major crash in the stock price, even right now, it's up about $3 in aftermarket trading. But if you can just look, it's come down off of a high. It doesn't look like the price of the stock dropped throughout January as SoftBank was actually removing their investment. But SoftBank did indicate previously that they're not necessarily happy with the performance of the Nvidia stock. Hence, they're d j jumping, dumping, slumping. Crumping. The trumpet. Mambo number five? Okay. So the $3.6 billion that SoftBank had in NVIDIA was part of the $55 billion that they have over 49 different companies, meaning that NVIDIA took up six whole percent of SoftBank's different investments. And it appears that uh, we'll see what's, what's going on with whether or not they're gonna be spreading this money to other tech companies, if they might wanna take a little jab and put it back into AMD. Probably not. There's probably like a whole lot of complication through moving money like that. I'm, I'm not the type of dude who just moves billions around in stocks. So I, like, I'm not sure what the legal procedures are behind that kind of stuff. I don't know. Anyways, that also ties into a story about NVIDIA doing another big oopsie about maybe potentially misleading the uh, customers and misleading the public about how much money they actually made from the crypto mining boom. Because initially, the what, what NVIDIA said from April 2017 to July 2018, they said that they took in about $600 million in revenue through mining of things like Ethereum. But it turns out, according to Market Insider, NVIDIA made, you know, these I get these numbers so tied closely together, you know, 600 million, 1.95 billion. Yeah, yeah, they, they underreported how much they made of crypto by over $1.3 billion. What the crap? That could be because of the whole perception of mining and people not wanting NVIDIA to be selling to miners and then prioritizing it. And then it looks like they didn't prioritize it properly because they were never in stock and everything was so expensive. Anyways, it never looked like NVIDIA did the right thing with the mining shenanigans. They couldn't time the market properly. They all had it, they had it completely messed up. But just like people who made a whole lot of money on Bitcoin back in the day, you don't have to know a whole lot to actually make money here. You just have to be available. So that's what NVIDIA did. Even though they couldn't keep things stocked properly and even after it died, they had way too much stock, they still made $2 billion. There it goes. That, I'm sure that uh, rustles some people's jimmies and it just looks like NVIDIA just, they bamboozled us. They were floozies with us. They floozled us. We got bamfloozled, fam. But you know what's not gonna bamfloozle us? The 1660 Ti, it might, I don't know. Anyways, a Russian retailer listed some 1660 Ti models, including an MSI single fan and a pallet dual fan and had pricing up there. It looks like it was quite pricey, uh, more than we're expecting it to cost in the $280 region. It looked like it was in more in the $350, $400 region, but again, that's after conversion. Russia has to pay more on import fees. Obviously, the $280 that we're expecting is for the US market. Here in South Africa, I would expect that we're probably gonna have to pay more closer to what the Russian retailer has, but we'll see when it actually launches in hopefully about two weeks, maybe one week, we'll see. Yeah, just like when they philandered our wallet. Nvidia is a floozy who philanders our wallets. In case you have an NVIDIA card that is RTX, unlike the 1660 Ti, 3D Mark just an added DLSS to the Port Royal benchmark. It looks like they can double the performance in the ray tracing benchmark with it. So if you care at all what the numbers look like, Mason, you can go check them out on your NVIDIA card now. Okay, so that's enough about NVIDIA and their crap. Let's talk about the oopsie that AMD did, which is uh, they have no Radeon 7s to give anybody. 
at all. This is nonsense. Like, with the, the original talk was that there would be 5,000 Radeon 7s worldwide. It either looks like they're allocating them not to retail channels, or that was just a whole bunch of crap and they're not even gonna have close to two, 3,000 in the market at all. So, according to people at OC UK, they said that they got about 76 GPUs, which apparently is going to be half of what is gonna be allocated for the UK overall. And on top of that, it looks like France and Spain are both only getting 20 units. It looks like for the whole of Europe, there's only gonna be like four to 500 Radeon 7s that are supposed to be coming out through the people that I know. Here in South Africa, I'm pretty sure we're not gonna get one anywhere near launch. And that was the exact same case with Vegas 56 and 64. It took, I think, at least two months for us to get our first shipment of Vega cards. And that was only after like AIB partners started shipping theirs in the States. Anyways, this is pretty rough. I'm not sure that uh, this is gonna be a, a pretty launch because supposedly the, the retail price is gonna be $700 when it launches later today. And we should have benchmarks out probably by the time that this video is posted. But uh, good luck buying one if you actually want one because this looks like to be as big of a debacle as what was the original Vega launch because holy crap, only one to 200 units for the UK in total and 20 for Spain and France. This is just sad, sad. So super dupey oopsie by AMD, but as we talked about in our previous video where we discussed the Radeon 7, I'm not sure AMD actually wants to make a whole lot of these. They're probably making very little profit, if any. It's honestly just a holdover until they can come out with something more powerful on their new architecture. And it kind of just seems like as long as they sell some, they can just have that flex of being the first company that had seven nanometer gaming GPUs out on the market and they can hold that over Nvidia's head. But I don't think anybody gives a rip, especially since we can't buy it at an affordable price. I don't give a rip. You know who might be excited? Probably not because he didn't get as much money as he wanted. The author of the Witcher series who sold the rights to produce the video game to CD Projekt Red initially didn't like the payout that he got because he chose a one lump sum instead of having it paid off over the you know profits that the Witcher series would inevitably go on to make since it was so successful at the hands of CDPR. And it turns out he was upset about that so he was asking for $16 million. And CD Projekt Red was like, you crazy dude, you already got what you asked for, but we'll talk to you, we'll see. And it appears that an agreement has been made. It doesn't look like he got the $16 million that he was asking for, but it seems like there is a mutual understanding. And then we'll see when Witcher 4 comes out if he asks for a little bit more. Maybe it includes like sales of future games, who knows, we'll see. Speaking of future games, or current games, I don't know. Apex Legends, I don't know if you guys have heard about it. I've literally only seen this on Twitter. Everybody's raving about it. it uh, it's just a new battle royale that dropped from the makers of Titanfall, the respawn people, and it saw over a million people play the gosh dang game in less than eight hours after launch. It's crazy, it's a free to play battle royale. It plays a lot smoother than PUBG. It essentially has Titanfall combat with some class setups. It's like they've done everything that I think they could to kind of help mitigate the issue of like having a team based battle royale. I, I only played it for like a couple minutes, but I love it so far. Uh, what do you guys think of Apex Legends? I wanna hear from you down in the comments. But you know what Spotify thinks of podcasts? Apparently a whole heckin' lot since they picked up two podcast companies, Gimlet Media and Anchor have both been acquired by Spotify and it looks like Spotify is just betting big on podcasts. They're not just going to be the music people, they're also gonna be the people who distribute your podcast, gobbling up all of that entertainment that you take on the car ride. Why are you looking at me like that? Like acquired as in both maps. Yeah, no, Anchor's owned by Spotify now. Very cool. I don't like it. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? I don't like it for the sheer fact that it just, I feel like this is what happens. A company comes up with a good idea, they don't know how to monetize it, so they sell it to a bigger company and then that service gets disrupted and becomes crap. I've seen that happen more than times than I'd like. And like, Spotify's fine, but it just, it plays to the same narrative that I've seen every single time of the company doesn't know how to be a company, so they have somebody else take that over and then it's not viable. And then I just like more, like better podcast integration into my Spotify. Like I can go to one app for my music or yeah. podcasts. Like I don't I feel know. Like Spotify could do that. I'm okay with having them separate, honestly. Like Spotify for my music, Apple Podcasts for my podcasts. Anyways, EA. 
talking about companies not knowing how to monetize things, they're blaming the lack of Battle Royale for Battlefield for its bad sales and lack of financial uh, success because it only sold 7.3 million copies. Oh no! They were expecting uh, another million. So uh, yeah, that means that Battlefield is getting scrapped. They're gonna probably add more microtransactions and Firestorm's gonna be a fart storm because they're just gonna microtransaction the crap out of it, trying to make up for the lost money that they had because nobody actually even wants to play the game due to all the controversies, the fact that uh, ray tracing is garbagely implemented. And then you got the th thing like Apex Legends dropping, taking over the Battle Royale. I see no reason why anybody would play Firestorm over Apex Legends at this point. I doubt it's gonna add anything innovative. It's probably going to also take the market from Blackout. So well, what chance does Battlefield have against the Call of Duty when like Apex Legends is just going to ruin the entire plan? Anyways, this is EA, you, you dug your own grave here. Like you're going to complain about 7.3 million sales. You're going to complain that nobody's buying your crap. And that's because you have investors like Disney patting you on the back saying, we don't know how to make Star Wars games, but we really believe EA is doing a good job. So yeah, when your investors are happy but your customers aren't, you're just gonna keep doing what you're doing and then wonder why you're never gonna see the success that you had at way back when. You're gonna look at the glory from which you've fallen and just resent it and know that you can never be as good as you were and then blame us. You want salt? You want salt? How about Intel? I got salt for Intel. You want to hear that one, Reese? So Intel, they released the new F series of CPUs, right? Yeah, so uh, F series, meaning that they have no integrated GPUs, okay? We all fall on right now? You would think that they would sell for less than you know CPUs that had the integrated GPUs. Intel says no, they actually sell for more. But not only that, this next little bit of news, Intel not only is charging more for a chip that has less, they also removed the solder from it. So they're going back to what they had on the 8 series. Part of the 9 series implementation was the fact that they actually soldered the gosh dang chips uh, for some reason, it, it actually wasn't that really good for thermals, but they, they at least were saying it's soldered. But apparently now they can't even guarantee that. Some are gonna come soldered, some are gonna come with thermal interface material just because Intel says it depends on where it was made. Intel, why do these even exist? Nobody asked for this. You're doing all the wrong moves. Go fly a kite, stop. Another oopsie was by Asus. They apparently were found injecting ads into video games through their GPU tweaker software, which I guess we should get riled up about since everybody uses it. <laughs> that was a sarcastic fake laugh in case you couldn't track there. Anyways, as you can see on this screenshot right here, there's this like 20 series ad that's appearing right there. This is an overlay that GPU tweak actually puts on the gameplay. And Asus came out saying, no, sorry, that's not that's not supposed to be an ad. It's supposed to be some sort of like overlay thing where you're able to put your own brand logo there so that like it's for streaming or something. Ida or Game Clan, they're, they're claiming something and the default image is the ad. Whatever, this affects what? Like the five people out there who use GPU tweak over Afterburner or EVGA Precision? Do you know anybody who uses GPU tweak? No, not even close. Do you know anybody who uses GPU tweak to overclock? I used to. No. That's because you were ignorant. Ignorant tank used to use it. You know what I'm ignorant about? Segway doesn't work at all. Cinebench R15 came out with an extreme addition. Uh, so apparently it's gonna quadruple the workload and allow it to be a better benchmark for high-end desktop chips. Kind of cool, you can download it at the link in the video description, we'll include it right there. But yeah, that looks a lot prettier than the original Cinebench. It's just a mod of the original one, but it's gonna wreck you. It's unofficial, so just max on, don't like complain to them if it breaks your system. There you go. Anyways, that's gonna wrap up hot news for today. How you guys doing? I'm doing swell. All of these oopsies just make me so salty. I could probably just be used to you know, preserve some meats at this point. Okay, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Go check out our UFD Deals website in case you wanna save money on computer parts, if that at all interests you. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Don't forget to get subscribed. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Also, side note, uh, I didn't want to put this at the beginning of the video. What do you think of the light? We got a new light. Does it look any different to you guys? If you stayed this long, let me know in the comments. Reese, show them the light. Make it bad. Zoom out and like do the whole thing. Just take it off the tripod. Make it whole, a whole bad experience for everybody. It's a big boy. 
it's 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 way bigger than it's supposed to be. It's like a tent. <laughs>